Hello, Internet. My name is Ryan Ingram, author of Rental Property Insurance, an investor's guide to insurance. And today we're going to be talking about what type of policy you need for your rental property or real estate investment. So the first and probably the most confusing question that I get is, hey, I'm looking to house hack this property. What type of insurance policy do I need? As I've shared before, the reason I got into insurance on the property and casualty side is because the investors and the insurance people are using two completely different vocabularies. So house hacking um, is a term that not honestly not many insurance professionals are familiar with so if you've never heard of it that means it's probably a multifamily property a duplex a three unit or a four unit or fourplex and you live in one of the units and you rent out the others so in the event that you are house hacking um, on a one to four unit then what you're going to need is a homeowner's insurance policy so long as if we're talking about residential being one unit to four units if you occupy any of the units or any of the space then it is going to be a homeowner's insurance policy because it is owner occupied now the minute that you move out of the property you're going to want to switch that to a dwelling fire policy i went over the differences between these in another video but Mainly, the main difference is that a homeowner's policy is always owner-occupied. A dwelling fire means it is a non-owner occupant. Or a insurance policy on a property that is not occupied by the owner. Which brings us to our next category. If I am a buy-and-hold investor or if I have a buy-and-hold property that's one to four units, what type of insurance policy do I need? In that case, if it's non-owner occupied, you're gonna want a dwelling fire policy. All right, now before you go thinking that you need to take notes on all of these, you can get this pretty little flyer that I had made and you can get that at insuredbyingram.com slash download. Now you're gonna to have to put in your email address in order to download this flyer, but rest assured, as I've said before, I will so seldom email you that by the time I probably do, you'll most likely have forgotten who I am. If you fix and flip properties, if you buy a property to renovate it, specifically to sell it, then most likely it's not gonna be occupied during that time frame. And if it is not occupied, then what you're gonna want is a vacant policy. Now these are generally two to three times more expensive than an occupied property because when a property is vacant, uh, people, aren't necessarily checking up on it as regularly people in the neighborhood probably see when you come and when you go and unfortunately they're just more prone to vandalism and a bunch of other nonsensical crimes fix and flips all the rehabbers all the flippers out there you're going to want to look for a vacant policy all right and now this is a very interesting one if you are a wholesaler or if you're familiar with the term wholetailing it's like uh it's it's kind of like wholesaling on on steroids you buy a property without doing any work to it immediately list it on the mls um, and sell it for a higher price but if you are a wholesaler or wholetailer then this all comes down to whether or not you ever take possession of the deed. If you just have the property under contract and then you immediately sell it before closing to you sell your equitable portion of that contract prior to uh, closing and then you never have possession of the deed, then you do not need an insurance policy. Let's say you have a property under contract and it burns down, then the owner of the property is gonna be the one that is responsible for the insurance. Whoever holds the deed is the one that should have insurance. So as a wholesaler, you should probably have a general liability policy, but that is not attached to the property. That is specifically attached to your business and provides you liability protection on your workings of the business. Now for wholetailing, if you took possession of the deed, if you ever uh, owned the property, then you are going to want to have an insurance policy. If the property is vacant, then you're gonna to want to have a vacant policy. If it's occupied, you're gonna to want to have a dwelling fire. The answer for wholesalers or wholetailers is, it depends. Now, 
if you own an apartment complex or a residential property that has five or more units, then you're going to want to have a commercial package policy. It's going to be a commercial policy. It's still going to have uh, coverage for the property, the liability, and all of that. It'll just be a commercial package policy or even a business owner's policy. It entirely depends on the condition of the property and also the insurance company. Some insurance companies uh, only write apartment complexes on business owner policies or BOPs as they call them in the insurance world and those policies are generally cheaper than your commercial package policy. Your commercial package policy, more of a pick and choose kind of a la carte style insurance policy. You're able to add and take away things as necessary, but for whatever reason, these are rated by the insurance company to be a little bit more expensive. So apartment complex or even like a mixed use where it's part retail, part apartment complex, you're going to want to be either on a business owner's policy or a BOP or a commercial package policy or a CPP. All right. And if you have a residential one to four unit property and you are using that for student housing or even a sober living facility, then you're still going to want a dwelling fire policy but it's not it's most likely not going to be with an admitted carrier you're going to find yourself on the excess and surplus lines or what they call the non-admitted market and the reason for that is both sober living and student housing um, just like your vacant properties they're just a little bit more prone to having uh, claims losses and the overall risk exposure is just a little bit higher because of that, they are not favored by insurance companies on the admitted market, but your excess and surplus lines will still have a insurance product for you. It'll just most likely uh, be a little bit more of an informal type feel. The declaration pages, the policies might look a little bit different. You might not have the online access that you would with a normal insurance company, but nonetheless, you would have insurance coverage. But as you can expect, it will be just a little bit more expensive. All right, now if you are building a property and you're a general contractor, you're going to want to have that general liability insurance. If you are an uh, investor that is either having a property built by your crew or if you are using a contractor, then most likely you're going to want a general liability policy as well. And you're also going to want to have a builder's risk policy. Now, sometimes this builder's risk policy has liability built into it, but nonetheless, you're going to want to make sure that both the property and your liability are covered. And if there is not a property and you're building it, then that is what's called a builder's risk because as you first start, you're gonna have material costs, but as you get further along in the project, then the value of the home is gonna increase and the coverage will increase along with it depending on where you are in the project. Now, if you are a turnkey provider or if you buy homes, rehab them, and then sell them to investors, then again, you're probably gonna want to have a vacant policy on all the properties as you're rehabbing them. And because this is your business, some companies offer what's called a blanket builder's risk policy, and that will allow you to schedule multiple properties onto that policy at the same time. So rather than having uh, one vacant policy, per property you can have just one insurance property or excuse me one insurance policy that has several different locations scheduled onto that and that again is going to be like a general liability policy along with like a blanket builder's risk all right and lastly for all of the people that do uh, vrbo airbnb or any sort of vacation rental where you, it's mostly short-term rentals then you're going to want to have a dwelling fire policy as well however you have to be upfront with your insurance provider and you have to let them know that this is a short-term rental property because because so many people are in and out of that property that increases the risk and consequently some insurance companies are not willing to take on that risk or put it in their same pool of the rest of the dwelling fire policies so they're either going to surcharge for it or offer you a completely different product which is still technically a dwelling fire but it changes that risk pool from a year-round occupied to more of a seasonal or short term which has its own way of valuating risk
But nonetheless, that is something that you're going to want to tell your insurance provider. So if you have a property that has been a rental for quite some time and you say, no, you know what, I'm going to try Airbnb for a little bit. I have heard of other investors being very successful with that. You are going to want to make sure that you relay that information uh, or your intentions to your insurance agent. Because if you are doing an Airbnb and you do not disclose that, you run the risk of not being covered during the claim because the property is being used uh, as in a way that the insurance company was not aware of. So you're most certainly going to want to have a talk with your insurance agent about that. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching that. Again, you can get this form at insuredbyingram.com slash download. Again, you'll have to put in your email, but I'm not going to email you. You can also uh, download a free copy of my book, Rental Property Insurance, An Investor's Guide to Insurance at reiinsurancebook.com. And again, the details are below. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And as always, I am not your insurance agent, so if you have any questions about your policy, what type of policy you should get before you take any action, make sure that you consult with your agent. Thanks so much. Can't wait to talk to you guys soon.